Hey guys, welcome to an episode that I think may be interesting to some of you. It's about splices. Um, we've done a lot about crack repairs and how to fish every number of things to try to fix a crack and an arch top, how to take the back off and all that kind of stuff. And this episode is going to be what happens when the crack is so wide that you really can't just glue it back together and the rest of the body might suffer if you try to do that. Now, you've seen me working on a Mando base from uh, 1920 or before. I don't know that you've seen that episode yet, but it's brewing in the background. So here's what's going on. You see me in the shop here and then you're gonna see the footage in this episode is shot somewhere else. I'm splitting my time between my own shop and I'm doing some work in another shop. Now, the work you see me doing in my shop is stuff that I own and I can mess up. But some of the stuff that I'm working on in the other shop, that's not the case. And if I were to characterize the difference between the guitars, it's like I have this Marwin Gotham and it's from World War II times, you can tell because it's got a wooden brit or tailpiece and there was uh, rationing going on. But if you look at this thing, look at the huge cracks that are in this. But I own this guitar. When I get to the other shop, the guitars are more complex. Um, they're better made. They're more valuable significantly. And so therefore the risk in working on that stuff is a lot higher um, people that want to see my guitars you know my numbers on my uh, hit count will go up and down because Faye said people got used to me building um, cigar box guitars and then the arch top stuff but as you progress in doing this you know you can only make 200 arch top videos before you cover pretty much anything but I'm trying to share some experiences I'm having good and bad to kind of, if you're into this someday, you'll be able uh, to punch in splicing uh, a guitar body or something like that. But anyway, so we're going to go to the other shop and I'm going to show you some work I'm doing on a Corelli flat top over there. It's a good guitar, um, but there's a couple of them over there floating around that kind of dried out and cracked and there's some significant work to do and I'm going to show you uh, how that work was done and also uh, the tools that were used. I don't think the lighting was the best so bear with it. So let's go check that out and I will catch up with you at the end back in here. Okay we are in a very busy place called Fred's and we're just trying to find a place to set up this guitar and do a little filming but this again is a Corelli and it is an awesome guitar when you look inside the workmanship is incredible and the problem is is it's got a few cracks in it or it did so the first thing you don't want to do is just jump into this and start going okay I'm gonna I'm just gonna take a router to it and a lot of cracks like um, there's one right here that you can seal them up and and put a cleat on it But some of this stuff was pretty bad and there's going to be some bridge work to do here. So This is not a popsicle stick It looks like one your dentist will not use it to have you say ah But this is some really really good spruce here and a couple things you want to pay attention to is how the grain is running um, and some of these splints, let's call them splints, are pretty thin. So you got to kind of look at the splices. splices. Fred says splices. Did you hear that one more time? Splices. And while he's here, I have a question. Do you know what this piece of tape costs? About $100. That's right, about $100. So you want to look at the grain on this spruce here. And when you're making splices, especially thin ones, you don't want a big wide uh, gap between the grain lines because it just might split. So you just kind of look at this and, and know your material. But 
we traced this out, cut it on a band, so I got a couple ones here. And then Fred told me you can route these out. Now, before I forget, you see the top of this looks like this, and this is formed. It says bridge here. So this will go back into here. But I want you to notice that there's a nice bevel you see that? That's beveled. So it sits down in here and it doesn't just depend on the sides being uh, just glued. So it actually kind of supports itself in there. But let me show you the trick here. This is a Dremel and it has a router attachment, a base. And believe it or not, but this here adjusts like uh, a floating bridge on an arch top. You turn this, you turn this up and down. These are like the thumb wheels on a floating bridge. Anyway, this will sit here and you can route out to make this crack just a little bit wider. But if you try to freehand this, it's going to be a total nightmare. So, there's this awesome thing that has this gap in it here. Okay. And you can put this and you set stops here and here to figure out how far you want to go. But you set this and it's got padding. Uh, you set this on top of the guitar and then you take your clamps once you figure out where everything needs to be and then this fits right in that opening so what you end up with is these splints and you have to do a lot of hand work I would use a sanding block um, I had a tendency to want to use the felt sander but you can take a sanding block I wish I had one well what do you know Fred is psychic but I can just take this sanding block and do this this way instead of a belt sander because if the belt sander digs in it'll split this and crack it but this will fit right down in there like so and it goes to the edge where the popsicle stick looking thing goes right there. Now again, this has towards the bridge. So this will fit right in here like so. And we can actually push this down and then we can do some work on the top as we need to. But you might have a question. That appears to be a pretty big gap. So we took a piece of spruce. Again, pay attention to the grain. And these are like cleats. What I wanted to do was cut one that went across here like so. But we don't want to load this up with a ton of them or make them excessively long or anything like that. So I want to show you a little trick here. This is pretty fancy. I took a small piece of wood. See that? And put it in the middle there. Put a piece of tape over that and then made this thing that will fit down in here. And then I took a dowel and went in through here. And if you look right there, there is a cleat with the grain running perpendicular to that of the guitar top. And so when we put this in, that will sit and support that right there and it will never fall through now that I've got that dried up I can fish that out of there but this will fit right in there and the curve matches it so again one of these is working really well versus the belt sander so that's kind of how you do this once I get this all glued up and everything in place and everything sanded down Okay, we've got a cleat here that's more of a supportive thing for this splint here. And I'm going to need to put another one up 
about right here. I'm going to get it away from the bridge so it's not, you know, right there in case we have to do something in there. But I'm going to sit this right about here like this. And when I was talking to you about doing the edges, I used to do these on a belt sander. And Fred says, just get a sanding bar. And this appears to be big and bulky. But when you're actually using it, it's actually pretty cool because if you use the length of the whole bar like this, you take a lot of wood off spruce and round things off, and it just looks cool too. Okay, we're going to take our fine hide glue here, and we're going to use this cleat here. Can you see it? There we go. Lighting isn't that great. And we're going to put some hide glue on it here and at this end where it butts up against the brace that's running right through here. And I've got an X in the middle of that so I can tell where I'm at once I put my fingers and hand inside of this. I guess there's one redeeming thing about flat top acoustics and it's hard to get your whole hand in an F hole of an arch top. All right, there we go. And I can take a little bit of hide glue and let it wick down right there. Perfect. Now while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and glue in this right here. Again, the hide glue will just drop right down in there. Let it go in like so. I'm just going to take a little bit of this tape here. And pin that down for the evening. And then we've got this other one over here same thing a high glue something remember when I used to use that stuff in the brown bottle and I thought I was like one of them things that they call a a luthier Fred says that some people shouldn't be luthiers they should be something else Presbyterian that's it that's the one thank you Fred it's not like Fred's in the background with his watchful eye on me the entire time I'm working on this awesome guitar okay now it's time for glue to dry all right what did you think of that that Corelli guitar is a valuable guitar and when you start taking routers and things like that into bodies, it's kind of like you're getting into an area that you might not come back from. I think what I enjoy the most out of uh, my role at that shop is they kind of look at me and say, hey, um, this is kind of right up your alley. Um, once I'm done with something, you all go ahead and work on the finish and do all that kind of thing. I enjoy that too. But the structural stuff has always been a challenge for me. I think that goes back to the early days of putting guitars together out of just about anything and understanding how to do that. So, uh, plus it's good experience over there. It's kind of like some people think that just one day you pick up an expensive Gibson or something and you just start working on it and that's where it starts you got to build up to that okay so let's take a look now that we're back in my, my shed um 
you're going to see this one come up. I rescued this one out of a window. It is called a Bajo Quinto. It used to be a Bajo Sexto till somebody was able two of the tuners. But this is a North Mexico band. Uh, and if you've ever listened to band of music, uh, uh, it's, it's polka music. It has an influence of you know, Germany and Czechoslovakia and uh, and Poland definitely, but look at this thing. That body is warped. Can you see that? Well, look at that big crack. The whole thing is coming apart. The top is relaxed. It's got some big heavy strings. When I do an episode on this, I'm gonna tell you everything about the music style and everything. Look at this, somebody, you can see that there's a different color of wood right here. Somebody glued blocks of wood or whatever they had and basically handmade this with a knife. But um, I'm gonna enjoy this one. This kind of stuff doesn't scare me. It's kind of a challenge. And when nobody else wants it, it's kind of good for me to be able to go through and do the structural stuff. So we're gonna learn a lot about this one and how to put it back together and, and, uh, and finish it. So I hope you learned quite a bit about putting splices in bodies and then we'll revisit that guitar here and there along the way. What we're starting to see is I've got a lot of different projects going on and sometimes things need to be uh, humidified and steamed and, and put back into shape and left sit for a while and finishes doing this and that and I got a kit going on. I'm refinishing a uh, 1918 Gibson mandolin. So there's a lot of different projects going on. You guys that are hanging in there with me, yeah, it's not about my hit count. I'm seeing videos that won't break 100 and then I see other ones that are up in the thousands. So I'm just sharing my experience with it and um, tell me what you're thinking below. Don't forget to check out the I cards up there. They're always interesting and we're gonna be off to something else next week, I guarantee you. Give me a like and subscribe if you have it, and I will see you soon.